What's up, everybody? This is Tim from Arm Wrestling Secrets, and today I wanted to clear up some um, confusion regarding side pressure and internal rotation. So this video is going to be called Critical Facts about side pressure and internal rotation. Okay, so there's been some confusion and I'm getting some pushback about side pressure. Okay, and I wanted to uh, clarify side pressure and internal rotation, okay? Because anatomically speaking, there's internal rotation, um, there's internal rotation on the arm wrestling table and it's getting confused a little bit and I wanted to clarify it for you guys and for use on the arm wrestling table. And I think this will hopefully bring the side pressure, my side pressure argument, not necessarily to a close, but um, I'm gonna clarify my side of things. You know how I have been very clear on this channel that a side pressure approach to arm wrestling is the wrong approach. Okay, now I'm, just before I even start, okay, before I even get into the mechanics um, and muscularity of the side pressure approach, okay, and side pressure uh, training and things like that. Um, I wanted to tell you, look, I've seen the videos on YouTube of a lot of great people training side pressure. I've seen Ryan Bowen training side pressure. I've seen Todd Zilla training side pressure, okay? I have seen Voice of Arm Wrestling, that channel, okay? I've seen Coach Ray, I've seen Giannis Amolins, okay, the Jedi fabulous arm wrestlers, okay? Training inside attack, they're training side pressure, okay? They are training, they are training an inside press, inside hooking, side pressure attack, okay? I've seen the videos. I know some of the great guys in arm wrestling are training that way. They've decided to dedicate their lives to arm wrestling. They decided to be strong in every conceivable position in arm wrestling. Good for them, okay? That's that's fine. And what I'm saying is I've said what, what I've said from the beginning is number one, you are not them. Um, that argument doesn't seem to matter to a lot of the people. Um, they, they just go, oh well, guess what? Andre Pushkar had lots of side pressure, so you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, well, if you're Andre Pushkar or you're some of those other people, or if you're Jean Berzank, like for instance, he's got great side pressure, or if you're Ron Bath, he's got great side pressure. Michael Todd had great side pressure. Um, if you're one of those guys that's got great side pressure, number one, what are you doing watching my channel? Number two, what are you doing making comments? And number three, why don't you get busy winning world championships with your incredible side pressure instead of telling me how great side pressure is for arm wrestling? Okay, now that being said, let's get into the muscularity of side pressure. Okay, and we're gonna clear up some things. So as I said, I have a degree in exercise physiology. I am a professional personal trainer and I work with professional athletes and strength athletes and lots of things like that. So I know my anatomy, so let's get into it here. Okay, for all you guys saying side pressure wins, you need side pressure to be a great arm wrestler. Okay, at what point did I say you don't need any strength here? I never said that, did I? Now, um, you need to have a rotator cuff. Everyone has a rotator cuff. Everyone's arm is designed to go this way. Everyone's arm is designed to go this way, this way, this way. Okay, now let's talk about the rotator cuff muscles. And I want, I want you side pressure guys to understand this, okay? Now, like I said, I've seen the training videos of people producing lots of force sideways. And I'm also telling you that, yeah, you can, you can build over time, you can build lots of strength in different positions of the body. And I'm saying that can be really, really destructive to your arm. And if your arm is really sore after your training side pressure, stop wondering why, okay? You are killing your elbow with the side pressure. So now I'm coming right back to the muscularity. Now we talked about the rotator cuff. Now there's four rotator cuff, not cuffed, rotator cuff, C-U-F-F, -F, rotator cuff muscles, four of them. They are designed for the rotational aspects of the arm, the shoulder, at the motion at the shoulder. Okay, now this, from an arm wrestling perspective, is internal rotation. Now you're gonna watch me do two things and I'm going to clarify this. Now watch, okay. Bringing your arm, your elbow,
bringing your elbow and being able to hold your elbow close to the side of your body, that's internal rotation. That's, that is the most important strength. If you're talking about needing internal rotation strength, you need, you need to be able to keep your arm inside your body or next to your body. Now that takes tremendous internal rotation, okay? So what it doesn't need is training with your arm going across the table this way. Okay, so coming back to the rotator cuff, you have one of the four, repeating, one of the four muscles can do internal rotation. Like I said, this is internal rotation. Or any kind of pushing motion across the table Okay, that's internal rotation. One muscle, you have the subscapularis that is on the inside of your shoulder blade. If you put your hand on someone's back, okay, on the inside of the shoulder blade, you can't touch the subscapularis with your fingers on the outside, it's on the inside. When it shortens your rotator cuff, that, that, that one muscle of your rotator cuff, when that shortens, that's gonna internally rotate the arm. Now that muscle can be made very strong, but like I said, that is one muscle, and your elbow is attached to the table, okay? So your other muscles, whatever other muscles you have, once the elbow comes off the, the pad, then you have your shoulder power, then you have your deltoids, okay? Then you have other muscles available, but when your arm is on the table, like it has to be an arm wrestling, and your arm is attached to the table, you have one muscle, okay? Now, to pull your opponent across the table or to push the opponent across the table. Now, coming back to what I said now, here's where the confusion's coming in. Now, remember what I said, bringing your elbow next to your body and keeping it there. Now that is important. Okay. Now think about that. Now your humerus, now this is the bone, the upper arm bone is your humerus bone, okay? Now, there's two bones of the forearm. Your radius is on the top. So when you touch the bone on top of your forearm, on the thumb side, that is your radius bone. When you put your, your hand on the smaller side, the smaller bone here, that's your ulna bone, okay? Now, this is your humerus bone, your upper arm bone. Your upper arm bone. Now, bringing your elbow next to your side, Okay, that's adduction, adduction, A-D-D-U-C-T-I-O-N, A-D-D-duction, humeral adduction. It's also considered internal rotation. Now, guess what muscles are responsible for humeral adduction? This, this, the motion you really need an arm wrestling, the one I'm saying you really need an arm wrestling, the strength you really need an arm wrestling. The internal rotation strength, you really need an arm wrestling. What muscles are responsible for this? For being able to keep your elbow next to your side. The lats, the strongest muscles of your upper body. The pull-up muscles. Okay, the rowing muscles. Okay, those muscles are mostly responsible for keeping your humerus next to your body. That strength of keeping your elbow tight to your body, that is your chest and your lat muscle, primarily your lat muscle. Keeping your arm, once you're pulling your arm close to your body here, okay, you're using your chest and your lat muscle primarily. Your rotator cuff is a flimsy, muscle now um so that's that's the basic muscularity remember you're gonna remember what i said before i might have mentioned this my, i'm gonna be putting out some pulling exercises for arm wrestling my my favorite pulling exercises for arm wrestling those are the ones where i'm doing pull-ups where i keep my elbows right next to my body that i hold really tight with my arms really really close and i add weights to my body i'm going to show you those that builds extreme 
humeral adduction, internal rotation of the elbow next to the body, okay? I also do a lot of rowing exercises, okay? So where I'm gonna be pulling the arm backwards towards me and keeping my elbow next to my body, okay? Really tight, okay? And I can show you those exercises too. So I do several exercises for keeping the elbows tight to the body. Those are very, very, very important, okay? So um, I also do a lot of chest exercises. Remember, I'm keeping your chest and your upper back and your lat muscles, all of those muscles really, really strong. Those are muscles responsible for that internal rotation strength, humeral adduction strength, that I believe is essential for arm wrestling. Now, coming back to side pressure, um, remember, now side pressure is an approach you're going to see on YouTube a lot, and you're gonna see professional arm wrestlers winning with side pressure. And I wanna be clear, there are people that can do it. There's also people like LeBron James that are 6'8 and 270 pounds, and they can fly through the air. There are athletes in all different shapes and sizes that can do things above and beyond what normal athletes can do. Okay, so I've been clear about saying a lot of people, if you're going to use a side pressure approach to arm wrestling, okay, you can only spend so much time training. If you're going to train side pressure, if you're going to follow those guys on YouTube and go, you know what, I'm going to spend my time training side pressure because I know better. I'm going to I'm going to come across with an attack towards the pad like Toddzilla cuz I know better, right? That's that's what I'm going to do. You're wasting your time. Okay? You have only a limited amount of training time. And what I'm suggesting, what I'm hoping you're watching these videos and why are you watching me if you're not really listening to my advice? If you're going to if you're going to watch my videos and then tell me I'm wrong, change the channel, man. Okay? Now look, back pressure Develop a back pressure style, okay? Pronating by extending your opponent, okay? If you're choosing an inside style where you're just gonna be like, you know what, man? I'm just gonna hammer my opponents to the pad with my subscapularis, okay? If you put the same amount of time training your back pressure strength, your wrist strength, your ulna flexor strength, your low hand top roll, your low hook and drag. You notice I didn't say a low hook and side pressure. Hook and, that doesn't work. Hook, pull, top roll, pronate pull and some of you guys on the channel that are saying no that's not the how the top roll works you go to the side you just go like this you've been watching too many videos and you don't know how to arm wrestle and that's a fact okay so for you guys like i said it's it's your life you can train as much side pressure as you want keep keep training across the table with that one muscle i told you you have and it is you don't have more muscles than i do you have the subscapularis rotator cuff muscle to pull across the table. The only muscle you have available to you is the subscapularis to bring the arm across the table. That's a fact. To pull backwards, you have, you have a tremendous amount of muscularity to pull backwards. You have very little to come sideways, okay? So my advice to you is definitely to work on a back pressure based style. Now we talked about humoral adduction. I wanted to talk about some training methods of those before I actually show them on video. I don't have my training equipment here. I'm on vacation on the mainland. If you're wondering why the background's a little bit different, I'm on my second house on the mainland here and I'm loving being back here out of Hawaii and I plan to be here permanently very soon. Um, so let's talk about training, um, the humoral adduction aspect of arm wrestling, okay? And a couple things that you guys can start doing right now before I show them to you on video, okay? So um, one thing, now I mentioned the chest and the lat muscles as primary, um, primarily responsible for that humoral adduction strength that you need to keep your arm close to your body and your elbow tight to your body. Like I said, that's very important, okay? And you need your lats and your rhomboid muscles, and your chest as well, because we're not only keeping your elbow tight 
with a back downward pressure, downward, your elbow needs to stay on the pad. We need downward pressure. That's where your pull-ups come in handy. I do neutral grip pull-ups, nothing wide. My hands are, my hands are in an arm wrestling position when I'm doing pull-ups, okay? You know, like I said, I'll show you these, but I put my grips on, okay? And then I pull myself up. Travis Bajan's done these too. He, he, he was doing these years ago, okay? So I didn't come up with this, okay? But this is definitely a fantastic exercise for arm wrestling. And it's very good, not only for building your downward, pressure, your downward, this type of strength for arm wrestling, almost a downward pressure, but it's also keeping your body tight. If you have strong downward pressure, like with pull-ups, okay, think about that. Your ability to stay, to stay connected to the table will be better and you'll be more anchored down and you can keep your elbow next to your side, okay? That's a huge exercise for me, which I'll be demonstrating later, like I said, in my pulling exercises. Uh, for arm wrestling. And those are different than all of the individual arm pulling exercises. Obviously a bicep exercise is a pulling exercise. All the exercises you've seen me do are primarily pulling exercises. Um, even the hooking stuff and the, and the pronation, it's all based on pulling. What I'm doing with my pulling exercises that I haven't shown you yet are gonna be, are gonna be multiple body part pulling where we're not gonna be focused on keeping the elbow next to the side on a stability box. We're gonna be doing full pull-ups and rows, but based on um, kind of based on building strength for arm wrestling, obviously, very specifically. Okay, so we talked about the pull-up, okay, and keeping your elbows next to your side. Now with those, I do pull-ups where I do, I do repetitions of up and down motion, the active motion of the pull-up, and I also do ones where I'm isometrically holding the elbows right next to my side, okay? And I got the bars pretty much right underneath my chin. Whether my, whether my hands are straight or whether my wrists are bent, I do some different variations there, but it's always based on keeping those muscles as tight to my body as I can. So I build those muscles very strong with that, okay? Then I do another exercise, which is kind of based on like a rowing motion. You've seen people do seated rows where they're kind of sitting and, and, and pulling, pulling the weight in towards you. Okay, so it's a similar motion that I'll do on that is pull, um, and I'll do variations on that, right, where I'm gonna be using usually a pulley system on those particular ones, because like I said, my arm's not on a stability box for these particular uh, pulling exercises, which like I said, I will demonstrate for you. Um, but usually grabbing different handles, using the grips, things like that to mimic an arm wrestling position, but I'm gonna be pulling this way. Okay, so from, from an arm wrestling angle. So I'm gonna be doing downward pulling. I'm gonna be doing pulling from the direction that my opponent would be in. Once again, building that humeral adduction strength, keeping my elbow next to my body. Okay, so, um, and then the third thing was involving the chest. Remember, once your butt, once your, your arm, if your arm is being pulled in this way, like a chest fly, you ever see the people doing flies with dumbbells, okay? The way the chest works is the chest, as the chest shortens, as the chest shortens, meaning contracting, contracting, as you're contracting your chest, your, see how your arms come in, okay? Now the chest can bring a certain amount of, of, of humeral adduction. It has no effect on the muscles below the elbow or the, the bones below the elbow, the, the limb below the elbow, okay? So your chest, even though your arms are coming in, your, your chest can still flex without your elbow doing anything. So don't think that your chest or your lat muscle has any impact on your ability to move the muscle below the elbow. Your lat and your chest is having an effect on the upper arm, keeping your arm close to your body. It has no effect. On, on the lower body, your chest has no effect on that, but it does have an effect on keeping your arm close to your body. So there's multiple exercises I obviously do for the chest. I do some of the basic exercises that most people do, bench presses with dumbbells. I like dumbbells more than barbells, okay? I like the individual uh, stability of dumbbells with those, but I'll do dumbbell presses in multiple angles, nothing fancy. I'll do, I'll do weighted dips, okay, on a bar. I'll, I'll demonstrate all of these. These are my kind of pushing exercises for arm wrestling. Um, 
building chest and shoulder strength, things like that. But there's also one exercise that I think is really good for arm wrestling that most people are not doing and not thinking about. And before I demonstrate this, let me just mention it because I think you'll know what I mean. Think about this. Okay, now we talked about humoral adduction being really important for arm wrestling, like your ability to your ability to keep your arm inside your body. Now that muscularity, that's starting to involve the chest. As my arm crosses this point of passing my ribs, my chest becomes more and more involved and much more involved as it crosses into the midline of my body. Okay, so my chest is actually really engaged right now and that's really important. Okay, for keeping the arm next to the body, not for not for this, like I said, the chest and the lat muscles are not involved. That's why I say back pressure style is what you should be developing, not a pushing style, okay? But that doesn't mean you don't need strong uh, pushing elements in arm wrestling for overall stability, okay, strength. The last exercise I wanted to mention for the chest was the pec deck, okay? Have you guys ever seen those machines where you're, you're focused on bringing your elbows together, but the, the pads are here and you're squeezing they're they're machines they're like they're kind of like a dumbbell fly but they're better because they bring your arms into an arm wrestling position the pec deck that's what i call it okay i don't know depending on what country you're in or what machine you're looking at it could be called the chest fly machine or something like that okay but it's going to be just the machine where you're on the pads and you're pulling and holding the weight in I'll do variations of those too. Active motion where I'm pulling in. And like I said, I do all the pushing, pressing, normal uh, dumbbell exercises and things for chest anyway. So, but I add pec deck exercises to that. I'm gonna do isometrics where I hold as much weight as I possibly can with my elbows right next to my body and really tight to my body. Okay, so that's working that chest aspect of the humeral adduction, okay? And like I said, I work a lot of pull-ups and pull in strengths, exercises to build the muscles responsible for keeping my humerus next to my body. Okay, so um, I hope this kind of cleared up some of the um, some of the confusion on side pressure, okay? And I hope it cleared up some of the confusion on why I don't think side pressure is a good approach. I wanna be clear with you guys about side pressure. Um, not that I haven't been clear so far, but I wanna be clear that you only have one life to live, okay? And you only have a certain amount of time to train and all of you, if you're a working adult, you only have so much time. It's much more efficient in arm wrestling if you put your time into developing a back pressure strength-based style instead of a side pressure style, okay? So, so, so when I go to an arm wrestling table, and I really hope this clears, this just to cap the video, I hope this clears things up for you because what, what I don't do is a side pressure approach to arm wrestling in terms of attack. So at no point, no matter what, ever, am I ever going to worry about attacking my opponent like this. Coming sideways, coming in and pressing them downwards and to the side. I never concern myself with attacking them that way, okay? My concern is setting up perfectly, considering the opponent very, very well, okay, and the how to beat them. I don't care what they're doing. If they're going to push me to the side, okay, that's not a concern of mine. I am not worried about coming inside and pushing sideways against them. I'm just focused on the mechanics and the leverage and whatever I do, whatever I do, whether it's top roll, a high hook, a low hook, it's going to be done in a back pressure style. Have a great day, guys.